right, hopefully it is recording. We are here. Well, I am here. On the night of the election. Oh my god. We just got... We just got absolutely felted. At all of Canada... Fu 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 felted. Right off the bat. Here we have the numbers. It is exactly... What I predicted with my old man a few nights ago. The conservatives would get 120, liberals would get a weak-ass minority. But who knows, maybe the mail-in ballots will uh, shift them to a majority. Anyways, I am here on the night of the election. I just got done recording a stream with my good friend Joel Davis, my good friend Donald Kemp on American Zarathustra. It was about landscape painting, geopolitics, you name it. Um, And the results are in, more or less projected uh liberal minority government just oh Oh, i knew exactly that this was gonna happen i thought that if they got it if he got a majority then all hope is lost unfortunately my man mad max didn't pick up anything but i wanted to go deeper into uh why Number one, we're all screwed. Number two, well, okay. Okay, let me just go. Number one, we're screwed. Number, kind of, sort of. Number two, being that, you know, why do I have my headphones on? Number two, being that, um, why is Canada the best, quote unquote, post national country? Why is it that politics are irrelevant. Canada is a post-political nation. What do I mean by this? Well, we'll go- we're going to read some passages from Lament for a Nation. But before we're going to do that, we're going to do a nice Twitter thread crawl. Let me just check the OBS here. Yeah, we're going to do a nice Twitter thread crawl. My hair is terrible. Um... Breaking news, Justin Trudeau's Liberals Reform Government. Ooh, CBC News Alert. And the quote tweets are just terrible. Everything here is terrible. Fingers crossed it'll be a majority. (laughs) I mean, this is the average leap. This is why Canadians, we get what we deserve, okay? I'm tired of... I don't care if this is going to get me into trouble. I'm a bit hyper. Uh, Oh my god, is that trending rigged? (laughs) Oh god. Well, I mean, if the mail and I mean, I think the problem is that it looked like Trudeau was going to lose a little bit, but I think that it was going to go the way I predicted, which was another liberal minority. This was a total waste of time, and it just didn't make any sense to do this. Oh, they have a new photo. Oh, I have to do... I have to draw this. At least draw this. I don't know how, but it's amazing. It, here's the thing, though. I posted this meme where this photo... Like, the photos don't matter. It's kind of like the uh, president's son's uh, dick pics from years ago. It's like... it's It's just... Okay... Every election, there's probably some funny business going on. I really wanted to troll people in the replies, but let me just go to uh, this poorly edited dry uh, meme from the uh, president's son, if you know what I mean. Uh, we will release new Trudeau blackface photos every hour till the election. <laughs> I love that. It's just like, that's the response of conservatives, of contards. It's just like, either like, you don't want to accept, oh yeah, it's a snowflake, bro, this is 20, this is 2021, it's not 2015, okay, um, every election's sort of, like, fake and G-slur, especially in Canada where, okay, here's the difference, let me go back to what I wanted to troll, uh, before I get into something deeper, I just wanted to say, of course, like, share, subscribe, uh, there's a donation, like, I'm thinking of doing a Ko-Fi thing where, People can request either commissions or articles or video, you know, requests. Love it. Hope for a majority. 
Oh, I guess you got led into the country by... See, here's the thing. Like, they did it to us, okay? Like, his daddy, Pierre, he did this to us uh, Italians and Ukrainians and Polish and um, German and, like... Any, like, old, quote-unquote, old-world immigrant came here to Canada, like, after the war, they were taken in by uh, Trudeau Sr. They were taken in by Gibbs. And I hate to say it, there's a lot of, until recently, there's a lot of, like, older Italians that, uh, a lot of older, like, Catholic immigrants that will vote liberal just out of, like, habit. Uh, why not? Is people still voting Toronto? Um, it was liberal support. I think it's a tad premature. It's like, so you won, I mean, he's going to get a minority. This whole election was just a scam. It wasn't, uh, in the sense that it was just a waste of time, and who cares? So here's probably some 18-year-old. I don't want to, you know, I feel bad for trolling them. Thank God, I seem happy to see CPC, Canadian Progressive Conservatives, or the People's Party. That would have been a catastrophe for the country. A catastrophe. How so? Yeah, exactly. They can't, at least like young like, equally young, hot women are also, like, chime, chiming in. Look at what Ford has done to Ontario. Yeah, that's, like, that's a completely different government. Exactly. So, some, like, stupid, like, it just, the same party. That doesn't matter. You know why it doesn't matter? Because Doug Ford is, A, stupid, and, B, um, a craven opportunist, and striver and he does whatever the media tells him and he will go along with basically anything i'm sorry if i'm not being as articulate but it's just this is a rant video it's just so entirely cretinous to say well Doug four controls ontario and look it's a disaster you know why it's a disaster because doug ford gets his cues from the toronto star and the cbc that's why it's a disaster not because doug ford has some mythical right-wing principles like his brother did so whatever it's just so stupid um i shouldn't even be this salty because i know that probably it's going to be a minority government and unless they do some kind of weird manipulation uh it's pretty much that um yeah so come on majority Ooh, some boomer probably um too early too early for me to relax. <laughs> uh, watch Jerry Butts CBC broadcast like watching paint dry. Yeah, it's true. The guy is... Um, but a, a lot of Machiavellian figures uh, have personalities like wet paint drying. So, uh, Okay, so the quote tweets are probably more in, are way more interesting. Um, here we go. <laughs> are you blind? I'm minority... <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Unclear whether it's a, oh, a good friend of mine. She follows him. So I'm going to uh, know her or whatever. I'm unclear whether it would be a minority. Are you blind? Um, that's like the John Zandig. What do you mean? What are you blind? <laughs> you know, it took five of them. <laughs> oh, uh, there's probably, yeah, there's about five uh, blackface photos from Trudeau. Um, Look at this person. I, I I shouldn't even be dunking on, like, younger people. Uh, BBC get absolutely fucked. Uh. He continues with gay a bit. Wow, that's, um... Uh, you're gonna get cancer. Oh, so this is probably a, uh, resist, um... Account. N oh, wait. Na that doesn't make any sense. Hin oh, so you're a Hindu nationalist... So, you're like a Brahmin princess that wants to come over here. Whatever. Anyways. Yeah, we are. We're fucked. Um, kind of embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> black. Oh, God. Um, it's just... I, I'm going... I, I will get to a more higher-minded point, but I just want to uh, go through all the sass first. Um, yeah, let, let me go to, I think... <laughs> me in two years when rent goes up to five hundred dollars yeah um look okay so this is a better point this is some verified what does he do uh i control the weather pins are bad all by the weather network um so he's trying to not be like kind of a lib like he's trying to be objective as possible 
a pang of envy watching this orderly matter of fact result come out as we'll still live through the collective tantrum from last November's presidential election. Oh, wow. An orderly, um, this is Canada. It is the neoliberal testing ground. It is the non-state that, you know, elections don't have any issues. There is no, um, in America, there, every election is sold for the last, I would say, I want to say since like, maybe Reagan, Nixon, uh, I guess like in the post-war period, every election, no, actually JFK, you could say, every election was sold as like, this is a life and death scenario. This is going to determine the ideological direction of the whole nation. And in America, every election is like this cutthroat, important Hollywood narrativized thing, Hollywood narrative. Whereas in Canada, it's the exact opposite. Like elections are just for pure Machiavellian reasons. Trudeau thought that he could get a majority. Um, and there is no any um, vital issues, especially social issues, because those get quashed uh, right off the bat. Because th that's honestly why I didn't vote for the Conservatives. Because, okay, A, O'Toole doesn't have any chance because he's like some kind of like bureaucrat dad, like middle class, upper middle class dad that... Um, just will go with the flow and uh when rubber meets the road it's you know he's just going to be trudeau light number two is that this result was entirely predictable and the, it's really the state-run media in canada that americans don't like america kind of does have a state media in an implicit sense in terms of various you know networked interests but in Canada, we really have a total lockdown on all media. And it really is uh, centrally directed. They're in the pockets of the Liberal Party. They were even going so far as to get that... I don't want a Fed post. That, uh, you know, uh, let's say she oinks. Um, that Rosemary Barton, if you compare the clips to when she was interviewing O'Toole and then interviewing, you know, Justin, and then even interviewing Jagmeet Singh, who I have no love for whatsoever, because all of the Zoomers, and you'll see some Zoomers are like, I can't wait to when we, you know, these young people are going to vote and going to have a NDP majority. Like, oh my God. Oh, we're screwed. Basis generation, you know, he plays Twitch with Hassan Abi. On, he, he plays video games with Hassan. So, um, so yeah, the, the problem is that in Canada, the Liberal Party pretty much is the one state party at this point. And it's largely, for the last at least 15 years, it's largely in part because of the CBC, because of the centrally directed media apparatus. So Rosemary Barton is hard both on Trude not J Trudeau, sorry, Freudian slip. She is hard on both Jagmeet Singh, who is... To the left of Trudeau, in almost everything. Kind of, sort of, not really, but whatever. And, of course, O'Toole. And, uh, you know, Bernier doesn't even get an interview, whatever. Uh, Thank the Lord we'll not be going down the road of U.S. Damn Trump! See, it's always this thick sludge of, like, Canadian passive-aggressive histrionic resentment at the Big Daddy America. You know... We're not like America, but we get all of our same talking points from the most obnoxious version of an American progressive. So it's kind of like even the critique of America, the negative liberal uh, leftist nationalism of Canada, or you can't even call it that. Let's call it the um, cultural regionalism of Canada that is largely left wing, that is just diametrically opposed to all things America. That in itself is still largely um, prepped by American progressivism and by, uh, the neoliberal order of things. Uh, there's this great video by, um, JJ McClellan about, uh, left, left-wing Canadian nationalism. Although I wouldn't say it's nationalism because of course we live in a post-national country according to Justin. So, uh, Joe Trudeau, um, the, so that's their big boogeyman is to not be like the evil, terrible right-wing, uh, Canada, sorry, America. Uh, I'm really slurring my words here. Uh, oh, thank goodness. And here he is. Um, 
Yeah, of course, followed by Obama. Um, yeah, I'm sh I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure uh, Trudeau is really going to hit those targets, right? Uh, yeah. Those all those uh, business interests from other countries. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he's going to do it. Uh, there is um. Get wrecked, Aaron O'Toole. Look at that profile picture. Video game enthusiast. <laughs> Uh, it's just so. I thought it was going to, at the end of the Kings vote for great hair and hollowness makes sense. The U.S. up is down. Yep, I agree, hundred percent. Um, I'll never be able to afford a house. Well, I have a house, so maybe if she's interested, um, well, you know, I I think it's very it's very interesting when you see I I like that's the inherent pull of the. Uh, the like, you know, LARPy, like right wing, well, we called them trad thoughts back in the day, but you know, it is something that just pulls to the heartstrings of every right wing male that, uh, yeah. So let's see if the results have changed. Um, 156, uh, let me refresh over here. It's just, uh, yeah, I mean, it's apparently... The conservatives also got the popular vote uh, again. So I noticed, like, people in America, when it came to uh, Orange Man, they were like, oh, the popular vote, and he lost the popular vote. Like, that means anything in an electoral college system or in the first fast of the post system that we have in Canada. Um, but it's... No, <laughs> I didn't think this quickly... Yeah, they didn't really. They didn't, Yeah, curtain flower. I wonder what that means. Oh, uh, so a friend fall. I, maybe I could be wrong about that account. Um, I'm just wandering right now. It's not really that important. Um, there. I wonder what Rosemary Barton has to say. Let's see. Did someone at her? Um, Rosie Barton. Oh yeah, pictures of Trudeau right off the bat. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, that's the stupid. Uh, yeah, whatever. It's just not... It's just, uh... You know, I mean, this is CBC, so they're going to gloat. Uh, okay, so... A liberal... New, projects a liberal minority. Nothing is changing. So, I, in order to illustrate sort of what hap what's happening in Canada, we have to go to the past. We have to go to Lament for a Nation by George Grant, who, um... I believe he was... In literature studies or philosophy universe, um, I think he was at McMaster. He was born and raised in Hamilton. Uh, so my good friend, uh, A.Y. Jack, T.A. Jackson, I was going to say A.Y. Jackson because we were talking about the group of seven uh, with Donald and Joel. Uh, so everyone in the post-war era, regardless of which side of the Iron Curtain they were on, basically agreed with the classical liberal and the only question was its means. Um... Universal implies a worldwide state which would eliminate the course of war among homogenous means that all men would be equal, war among classes would be eliminated, so both like communism and capitalism would be amalgamated in this world state. Today, scientists master not only non-human nature, but human nature itself. Oh, wow, that's kind of like our world. He wrote this in 1965, I believe it was. Particularly in America, scientists concern themselves with the control of heredity, the human mind, and society. Their victories in biochemistry and psychology will give the politicians a, pr a prodigious power to universalize and homogenize. So, this might seem strange. Why does science require the abolition of difference? I wonder why. Maybe it could be the same sort of uh, James Scott seeing like a state instrumentalizing logic of all of the great uh, imperial conquests over nature that was born from the Enlightenment. So here, George Grant ties this to the Canadian project, uh, qua, you know, post-war Diefenbaker Baker Trudeau onwards. Why does science require ab abolition of difference? But let us, let me remind you that the science TM trademark says multiple times the ideal society is California. Wow, hmm, stunning, right? 
Modern civilization makes all local cultures anachronistic. What modern science has achieved is mastery. There is no place for local culture. It has often been argued that ge geography and language caused Canada's defeat. But behind those, but behind these, there is a necessity that is incom uh, incomparable, more incomparably more powerful. Our culture floundered on the aspirations of the age of progress. The argument that Canada, a local culture, must disappear can therefore be stated in three steps. First, the man everywhere move inextricably towards membership in the universal and homogeneous state. And if you read, um, do I have it here with me? If you read Paul Godfrey's book, After Liberalism, he talks about how the, uh, in Ontario in the 90s, they enshrined the Universal Human Rights Co Code, which was similar to the uh, Universal Human Rights in the UN, which is based upon nothing but some kind of like vague Kantian humanist abstraction. First, men must, everyone must, must be in a look ineluctably towards membership in the universal and homogeneous state. Second, Canadians live next to a society that is at the heart of modernity itself. Third, nearly all Canadians think that modernity is good. So nothing essential distinguishes Canada from America. Oh, but see, we hate America, but we kind of are America. We're just the more fully realized version of the American, new American century. Put it that way. Um... They offer themselves on the altar of the re re reigning Western goddess. When Pearson set out on his electoral campaign in 1963, he was photographed reading William Durant's The Dawning of the Age of Reason. To Durant, the age of reason is the age of progress. The book was therefore appropriate reading for Pearson, who was about to persuade Canadians to adopt American atomic arms. So if you believe in modernity, you're a spiritual American. <laughs> And your only way to stand against it is unprincipled exceptions, and claiming otherwise is a Euro poor cope. There are many who would deny the second statement in the previous paragraph that the United States is the spearhead of the progress. Strangely enough, the two group, yeah, so the Swede model, the Canadian model, the Australian model now, you know, but that's all just cope. The Marxists deny it for progressive assumptions and American conservatives, quote unquote, deny it because they consider their country the chief guardian of Western values. So even George Grant, kind of like Gottfried later on, predicted this like Jordan Peterson uh, intellectual dark web, like we have to defend Western values, which is really just progressivism, but like with the speed brakes on. Uh, and Canada is the best example when people like Ezra Levant, you know, not to say like, I, well, whatever, um, you know, Canadian values, like what are Canadian values? Not having an abortion law. Is that a Canadian value? Yeah. According to the liberals, of course. Right. The two points of view are sometimes confused and combined by certain Europeans whose jealousy of the United States leads them to accuse Americans of being too reactionary and too modern at one and the same time. So they say that they're too modern, they're too capitalistic, they focus too much on material um, possessions and so forth, but at the other end, they're terrible right-wing reactionary in Jesus land. I mean, Canadians more or less view America the same way. Um, one thing that comes to mind here is... I wanted to write an article about this for the American Sun. Uh, I'll, 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 it's about wrestling, of course. It's about Breath of Him and Heart. So let me read a bit more, then I'll come back to that paragraph. Uh, then he goes about American conservatives. Uh, so equation of modernity with the control manipulation of reality in accordance to the, with unfettered human passions. So George Grant was saying that you have to combine the human passions with the managerial state. So you have on one end a libertine social order where you can't shame anyone for anything. And then the other, you have total bureaucratic managerial control. Uh, so the, so it's funny. Yeah. The CCP, they have like a huge, uh, Oh, wow. Look at this. Another, uh, another transplant. Let's, let's look at this tweet. I, I got distracted when the PBC was trending. Um, 
Look at this bug, man. Like, l- like, let's look, look, like, that is, if you want to talk about current Canada, there you go. I'm not saying anything offensive, but I don't know who needs to hear this, but it's a great day when Max and Bernier loses. Actually, I know exactly who needs to hear this. Every single supporter of the PBC. Wow. You are a cretin, and uh, I'm not going to Fed post any more than I have to. Yeah, paranoid much. Exactly. Uh, factoid was excluded from leadership debates, even though PBC pulled ahead of Green's effect. Yeah, there you go. Enjoy your sham democracy. Exactly. Including offensive. What do they consider offense? Okay, so there you go. So everything that you disagree with is offensive. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's, uh, is there any hidden tweets? Let's see. No, there's no hidden tweets. Let's see the quote tweets. Um, quarter million racists can eat it Ooh. yeah they're appropriating our memes yeah it's it's just uh th- this is the bugocracy of canada this is a representation there you go there you go this is um Everything that is wrong with current Canada. Uh, it's just, uh, there you go. So, equating modernity with control and manipulation of reality in accordance with unfettered human passions works in many other spheres as well. Can anyone imagine a surviving USSR going as far with the, uh, you know what stuff, the rainbow stuff as America has? That's progress. North American liberalism. So, this is George Grant. Uh, expresses the belief in open-ended progress more accurately than Marxism in understanding more fully the implications of man's essential being his freedom. Man's essence being his quote-unquote freedom. As liberals become more and more aware of the implications of their own doctrine, they recognize that no appeal to human good, like the you know even Marxists do this, nor in the future must be allowed to limit their freedoms, freedoms, to make the world as they choose. Social order is a man-made convenience. It is only purpose is to increase freedom. That is Canada to a T. There is no community. There is no imposition on your personal will. Uh, Unless, you know, you don't want to uh, undergo a certain medical, you know, whatever. Uh, What... What matters is that man shall be able to do what they want when they want. The logic of this liberalism makes the distinction distinction between judgments of facts and judgments of value. Value judgments are subjective. In other words, man is as freedom creates the valuable. The human good is what we choose for our own good. This is, you know, basic, you know, existentialism, uh, existence before essence, blah, blah, blah. Uh, The crux of the issue, the technical mobilization of the entire resources of our civilization demands certain forms of inhuman public organization and legal porn drugs is only there so you, the subject, can cope. So we need this great apparatus of the managerial state, including total, like, razors to the eyeballs. I push my fingers into my eyes uh, in humanity in various industries to prop up this que- this never-ending quest for human freedom. The vaunted freedom of the individual chooses becomes either the necessity of finding one's role in public engineering or the necessity of retreating into the pri- privacy of pleasure. The liberals- liberalism is fitting ideology for a society directed towards these ends. It denies unequivocally that there are any given restraints that might hinder pursuits of dynamic dom- dominance. In political terms, liberalism is now an appeal for the end of ideology. This means that, uh, hello, Canada, this election just proved it. The end of ideology is the perfect slogan for men who want to do what they want. Liberalism is then the faith that can understand progress as an extension into the unlimited possibility of the future. It does this much better than Marxism, which still blocks progress in its old-fashioned ideas of the perfectibility of man, the new socialist man. So you can either be a bug man in a pleasure dome, or you can be the social engineer that is part of the long chain and just a like a small tiny insignificant cog in the machinery that runs the pleasure domes the human battery systems right the you know borg hive whatever 
Modernism, according to Grant, is intrinsic, intrinsically liberal because the unchaining of the passions corresponds to the unrestraint of technical advancement over any moral norms. Socialist norms included something called gain of... Oh, I'm not going to say that, YouTube. So, Grant mocked French and Nash, Canadian nationalists for wanting American technology and French values. We've seen now what the scorn comes from. The technique is the value. Technology, Jacques Ellul, technology is the value. Teke is merely conditional. Amoral research is amoral. Economics is amoral people. You know? Amoral biopolitics amoral medicalized apparatus of control, amoral technological develop, development damning the consequences. Because it, Why? Because it extends, quote-unquote, the stasis of life, which extends our ability to uh, become uh, basically veal wrapped in cotton balls. Uh, just a bunch of series of pleasurable erogenous zones that are manipulated. Uh, it extends our capacity to take in the somas. Early capitalism was full of moral restraints. The Protestant ethic inhibited any passions that did not encourage acquisition. The greed of each would lead to the greater good of all. But in the age of high technology, the new capitalism can allow all passions to flourish along with greed. You know what's funny? I remember um, Ayala Girl had this thread about how she would take these part, you know, these tech bro like orgy parties with all of this like new quasi new agey psychological regalia. That was like taking like o much older 80s versions of uh, New Age thought. Where these like yuppies would do these rituals that were kind of like mock, you know. And, and like extruded through that like rat, neo-rat, rationalist lens that tech bros are so, uh, you know, enthralled by. And it was just like a picture of hell. It was like, you know, people doing various forms of debauchery. There was a crying room where you could cry alone. There was a hugging room. Like, it, it's just the simulation of human contact. And I, I remember that was so fascinating because this is what the oligarchs, this is what the uh, the ultra, you know, technophile, uh, p the, the sort of bug man technocracy, that's what they, their level of understanding of the human is at. It's just a manipulatable um, machine or computer that you can input data sets in and out of. Uh, so, Playboy illustrations, the f illustrates the fact that young executive is not expected to be a Horatio Alger. The titillation of the jaded taste of the masses. So, this is like before the 80s, you know, Gordon Gecko, right? Uh, but even that was like naive compared to the debauchery of the modern tech bro. Uh, with automation, the work ethic of Protestantism disappeared. Liberal ideology reconciles the political power of the elites with the private satisfactions of the masses. So very much like a Huxley and fun revolution, like you all get into your soma pods and uh, you waste away while the technocracy, you know, keeps pumping with your like VR. Uh, oh my God, I'm going to punish myself for saying this. Like you're like VR, Fudinari, tentacle, whatever. It's like you get to enjoy this ecstasy of debauchery while the uh, technocracy keeps pumping. State capitalism and liberalism are much more advanced manifestations of the age of progress in the Russian system with the official Marxism. Okay. Let's go to a point about Amer uh, Canada. So we recognize this as Straussian. So like the, uh, the people like fighting against it, the conservatives aren't really conservative. Um, if Lockean liberalism is the conservatism of the English-speaking people, what was there in Britain, British conservatism that was not present in the bourgeois thought of Hamilton and Madison? If there was nothing, then the act of loyalists are depraved, deprived of all moral significance. Anyways, after entertaining this argument longer than he really should, Grant points out that it's a hey historical special pleading to say that the bad liberalism only stared at after the Amer America, that the revolution itself makes no sense with the with the understanding of history. Yeah, the American Revolution was liberal. I hate to break it to you, but that's, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he talks about gold. Goldwater is an American conservative, but what he considers the liberal philosophy of Locke. <laughs> this is just as true, except that the Globe and Mail are American liberals in much a literal G-slur sense. 
In an earlier day, this was one respect in which Canada could differentiate from the United States. Canadians had memories of a conservative tradition, high Toryism, which is what Grant talks about, never stood on an abstract appeal to free enterprise. They were willing to use the government to protect the common good. They were willing to restrain the individual's freedom in the interests of the community. The recent conservatives, conservatism of Toronto... Hello, Young and Bloor business? America? Americanism? Uh, Toronto as expressions by the Globe and Mail is American, not Canadian conservatism. It's funny how much that the Globe and Mail obsesses over America now. They're trying to rival the CBC in being, uh, you know, libs. But uh, they were the ones that brought it to our, you know, across the border. They called for the protection of property from government interference. Canadian Goldwaterism shows how much Toronto is now in spirit a part of the United States. Wow. Shocking. <laughs> Take that, Canadian liberals. So it's funny how, like, the Globe and Mail is kind of like what the, well, I guess, Wall Street Journal, like the business paper that is like, when it comes to social issues, is just as lib as the next one. In fact, probably worse. Um, cause even the CBC will like entertain like certain forms of counter thought because they have to, but, uh, not in America. No, I mean, sorry, not the global and mail. And finally, okay. How long is this? It's a matter of what most Canadians believe are made to be, to believe man. He saw the real atomic black pill even back then. That's what I respond. So finally, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to read this part. And so this is what conservatism ultimately amounts to lube for the dildo of progress. Feels like this was written yesterday. See, not even Moldbug could rival Grant in uh, his insights. Anyway, sorry. Sorry about that, you know, going after whatever. Um, the impossibility of conservatism in our epoch is seen in the fact that those who... So this is the impossibility of con true conservatism in Canada. In our epoch is seen in the fact that those who adopt the title can be no more than the defenders of whatever structure of power is at a moment's necessity... Uh, at the moment necessary to technological change. They provide the external forces necessary if the society is to be kept together. They are not conservatives in the sense of being the custodians of something which is not subject to change. They are conservatives generally in the sense of advocating a sufficient amount of order so the demands of technology will not carry the society into chaos. Because they are advocates of nothing more than this external order, they have come to be thought of as objects of aporium, by the generous hearted. Um, he kind of, yeah, he kind of predicts Trump. So, um, what this is saying is that the conservatives are kind of like the shoring. So things don't get totally clobbered. So technology and the discourses of social freedom, quote unquote, present in liberal society, they move along chaotically. They have their, you know, vanguard. They have their, um, profane inverted counter initiatory spiritual center of radicalism and transgression but then what happens is the conservatives will come out from behind um and they will provide a nice framework for those quote-unquote new values to not go off the rails so the best example would be like bob ray in the 90s uh in ontario then uh Harris came in, the conservative that everyone hates. That who's that dumb actress? I oh, I hate her so much. But she's been in a lot of great films. Just I hate her personally. What's her name? Sarah Pauly. Uh, she got her tooth broken uh, in a protest against uh, against Harris, and uh, so he came up and like sort of like cleaned up the clusterfuck in Ontario, and it just uh, yeah. That's, that's, they're the ultimate, um, they're the ultimate, like, chair, uh, <laughs> can I say that word on YouTube? Uh, you know, when you share your wife, uh, they're like the ultimate shed husbands of the liberal order. And so the impossibility of, so this is like, I remember, um, in my comparative politics class in, uh, in university, my one prof my one professor he he was actually he's actually like a well renowned China expert he was actually there during the Cultural Revolution, and he you know 
rights for the Golden Mail and so forth. And uh, we were doing Lament for a Nation. I think I that was one of my books that I had to do a review on. Of course, I picked that one. And he's like, well, you know, Gio, it's a lament. What do you want? It's a lament. <laughs> it's like, it's a lament. It's over. Like, we're done. It's over. Put a fork in it, you know? Um, that's Canada in a nutshell. Put a fork in it. We're done. I just wanted to explain uh, some of the nuanced and differences. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Let me go to the... I can't show you the clip because of copyright. But um, let me go to... Uh, can I go to beyond the mat? Okay, yeah. Um, beyond the mat. Was it beyond the mat? Or was it... Um... Yes, beyond the mat, Bret Hart. Yeah. No, it wasn't... Okay, no, okay. No, it wasn't that documentary. It was Bret... Brett the Hitman Heart Wrestling with Shadows. That is the documentary. It's on YouTube. I can't show you the clip, obviously. Let me just show you the image. Yeah, I love how, like, Vince McMahon, like, Vinnie Mac is just, like, ominously staring at him. It's like he's just so pissed. So, this is what I will leave my election post-election analysis of where I was, uh, you know, trolling the libs. Let me enlighten you with how Brett the Hitman Hart, and I'm giving my article away, I, you know, I probably will still try to write it. There's this one moment in Brett the Hitman Hart Wrestling with Shadows, and you could look it up, it's still on YouTube, miraculously, where Bret Hart he talks, he, he does this promo in the ring. And it was after, it was before the Montreal screw job, I believe. And you know, Canadians, Canadian wrestlers have this like weird reversal of kayfabe where the American wrestler is the bad, you know, the, the heel and the leaf is the face. Whereas traditionally a lot of Canadian wrestlers were, you know, they were like heels uh, like a lot of resistance, Bret the Hitman Hart turned heel. And so there was this one moment where he was cutting a promo against America in the ring. I think it was in Madison Square Garden. And he was talking about exactly what T.A. Jackson highlights here. Let me find it. Um, in this sort of, in George Grant's analysis of how Europeans and Canadians treat America where they have on one end this like weird dialectical shift where they're too modernist but they're not modernist enough they're not liberal enough they're reactionary so is this it let me let me go to it um let me find it so essentially Brett the Hitman Hart personified that critique of America in his promo, inadvertently, of course, where on the one end, America is like greedy and materialistic and has no workers' rights and they treat people poorly and their cities are filled with crime. They're rampant with um, the obsessions over material possessions, the obsessions over crime and degeneracy and so forth. And, but on the other end, they're also racist and bigoted and they, uh, don't take, he said in Canada, we take care of people, we're accepting, blah, blah, blah. It really was like the perfect summary of the relation between Anglo-Canadian liberalism and Anglo-American liberalism. And so go and watch that documentary. And of course, uh, I'm not that bummed out about the election. I saw it was coming. It's going to be another minority government. He wasted everyone's time. Uh, it's just... Um, Justin's legacy, his name... That's why he... Let's face it. That is why people cast their ballot for Justin Trudeau. It's because they have this like retconned, revisionist, romantic picture of his father. 
they get nostalgic tears in their eyes over uh, the man that set Canada down the road to ruin what we are nowadays. We had the ability to be a much older European high Tory country with their own sense of national identity and pride derived from various um, cultural factors. But no, we squandered it to become uh, an international wayfair zone, a neoliberal economic zone. Uh, so, like I said, like, share, subscribe. This has been off the cuff rant. This, you know, the election is over with. Thank God. Uh, God bless and goodbye.